in today's video we're going to be going over the upcoming temperature pattern where we do have overall warmer air expected for a majority of the upcoming pattern there is cooler time frames but really cooler this time of year just means like lower 80s mid 80s so it's not really going to be too dramatic although there is a little bit of a more major cooldowns that the models are trying to suggest now towards the end of the model run that could potentially push us into the 70s especially upper 70s uh, for some areas, again, the temperatures would just be beautiful. It wouldn't really be like detrimental. The biggest feature with that would be the potential for major severe weather uh, when you have much cooler air moving into very hot and humid air. You obviously get a lot of instability. So that's going to be the biggest concern with that. It is at the very long range, though. Uh, we do have other thunderstorm and severe weather concerns to go over throughout the upcoming pattern. And we even have major tropical concerns now. We have 70% chance of development in the Gulf. And now pretty much likely to see Tropical Storm Barry uh, out of the Gulf here within a week or so. So let's dive into things. We're taking a look, a look at the past three days of temperatures. Uh, we have seen actually a lot of the warmth die down looking at the past three days. And that's because the past three days haven't been quite as hot as the three days before it. So we are seeing this begin to kind of die off. Uh, also some warmer temperatures starting to trend in for some of the West as we move into more of a neutral pattern out west let's take a look at some of the upcoming uh temperatures and as we move towards sunday here you can see more cooler air than anything in the east and this is coming mostly due to this warmer air mass that's along the west we call this a positive pna and oftentimes this is going to cause cooler air to move into the east and there is still a lot of a lot of warmth we talked about this yesterday but it's really really hard for me to break down uh, the pattern, especially as it pertains to your exact house, wherever you're listening to, it might vary from county to county here as we see all these blotches of warmth and cool, and it's all just random. But I would say there's a lot more cooler air set up in the east than there has been prior. There is warmer pockets as well still there, though. So it really just depends on where you're at. Monday is a lot of the same. Tuesday, the first here, much cooler in the east. Now looking at over 75% of areas in the east dealing with at least neutral conditions to below average conditions there. Uh, Wednesday the 2nd, warming up a little bit. Very, very average. Thursday the 3rd, maybe more warm than anything. So we start to move back into this warmer pattern. Friday the 4th is pretty hot in the east. The most major heat will be located over the north central states into some of the kind of Great Lakes. Of course, their averages are a little lower up there, but this might be some pretty severe heat up there. Uh, so just be on the lookout for that for 4th of July. Sunday the 5th, or Saturday the 5th, better yet, getting even hotter in the east as that hot air is transitioning eastward. A lot of this is happening, again, due to the opposite is what we were talking about earlier, cooler conditions sitting over the west. Uh, so more heat is overall starting to take over for the east. Uh, Monday the 7th, same thing. Tuesday the 8th, Wednesday the 9th, getting even hotter in the east. Tuesday or Thursday the 10th here. But what we're seeing is this dramatic heat wave for the western states. And this is forcing a bit of an Arctic air mass into the east. Now, I don't want to concern you that it's going to be below freezing or anything. What I mean by Arctic air mass is that this is an air mass coming from the Arctic. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's going to be completely frigid and below, you know, below freezing. Obviously, it's not going to be that way in July, but some people really think that's what I mean. So I have to clarify. It's just going to be very far below average. And this could definitely bring 70s uh, to the eastern states, which would be, you know, 15, 20 degrees below normal for this time of year. Feel much more spring or fall like as opposed to midsummer like. So that would be a big time story. And as we were mentioning earlier, that would bring a big threat of severe weather with it. Uh, probably a very linear threat as well. Friday the 11th, we see this just blasting down. It does have a cold front on the front end of it. So again, thunderstorms would be abundant throughout that area between the warmth and the severe cold. Looking towards the uh, 12th here, this is a Saturday. We see the greens 10 to 15 degrees below normal, even some of these purplish blues. Looking at 15 to 25 degrees below normal, and even some areas in eastern Canada there, 25 to 30 degrees or more below average. So this is highly below average temperatures. The only saving grace here is that this is at hours 342. So don't be surprised if this just doesn't happen at all. Uh, it's definitely a signal that we're watching, and this year has tended to bring uh, unseasonable cold temperatures at times like this. So it wouldn't surprise me, but we are very far out. So there's a lot of time to go and a lot of time for this to change. It's still here by the end of the model run on the 13th as well.
Now, looking at some of our precipitation, we are in a very stormy pattern in the east, really as soon as today, Saturday the 28th. We see by tomorrow on Sunday the 29th, there's plenty of storms around. Monday on the 30th, maybe even more widespread there with some of that storminess. Tuesday the 1st, we see a lot of this up and down the eastern seaboard. Wednesday the 2nd is the first day where we really start to slow down for a lot of the east, especially these more northern areas in the east. We could see areas closer to the Gulf and southeast coast have some storms around, but the more northern areas do dry up quite a bit by mid next week. Looking towards Thursday on the 3rd, much quieter in the east once again. Friday the 4th is very quiet as well, so for most areas in the eastern half of the nation, going to be great conditions for watching fireworks on the 4th of July, and really the west for that matter as well. The only areas where we're really concerned about precipitation is going to be the Rockies, the far upper Midwest, and then the deep southeast are going to be some areas to watch where there could be some thunderstorm threats, uh, but we're seeing many, many areas dealing with beautiful conditions, so you can't ask for a better 4th of July, really. Saturday the 5th, here, some thunderstorms, especially close to that Canadian border up here in the north central and northeast. Looking towards Sunday on the 6th, really a lot of the same. Monday on the 7th, it is moving further and further southeast now in the Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic, and southern New England. And then for Tuesday the 8th, moving more towards the mid-Atlantic and southeast. Now here's where that cold front starts to move in, and we get a couple of major lows. 991 there in eastern Canada, 999 there. Uh, near Michigan, so a couple of tandem lows, and we have what looks like a cold front here, but there's a lot of energy here as well, so we get multiple rounds to this, but you would be watching for some severe weather in here for sure, and if not, just really, really intense thunderstorms at the very least. By Friday the 11th, we see that that cold front feature is basically up and down the eastern and gulf seaboards, so very, very intense, and eventually we're left with a drier pattern once that cold air moves in, but again, Cold air might change, things might change. We got to be really on the lookout for that. Total precipitation here, uh, as far as the entire model run, we do see a decent amount here in the east, although it's going to be very close to normal for most areas. It's really the west where we're concerned about very dry conditions, but it is fairly typical in the summertime like this. Looking at the anomalies, again, mostly below average for a lot of the west. And then we are within a you know fraction of an inch we're looking at mostly within you know half an inch of average here whether that's above or below or right at it really in the east here so very very typical unless you're here in uh kind of like eastern canada or right there uh near the panhandle of florida there's a couple of areas that are pretty well above average but really decent uh really typical weather here it comes in an intypical way at times but we end up with typical amounts here overall over the next couple of weeks Storm Prediction Center outlooks here. The lighter greens are going to be our general thunderstorm risk areas where we expect general thunderstorms, but not severe weather. These forecasts are very tricky, though, so heat every watch warning and advisory still. Still pay attention. Dangerous weather does happen outside of where it's expected. Uh, your dark, two darker green areas are your level one marginal risk where we expect isolated severe weather. And then the two slight risk areas are going to be those yellow regions where we expect more scattered about severe weather to be occurring today on Saturday. Tomorrow on Sunday, uh, we see again, general thunderstorm risk for a lot of areas, two marginal risks, and then a singular slight risk there for the Midwest. And by day three on Monday the 30th, as of now, we have very large general thunderstorm risk area and two marginal risk areas there over the Mid-Atlantic and then more of the Midwest and parts of the Ohio Valley. Now we're still tracking those tropical concerns as we mentioned and yesterday it was only a what was it 30 percent chance of development it was a code yellow so there's yellow orange and red we were at yellow the lightest risk but i told you guys that almost every tropical system starts out as a yellow one and they have to move up from there or basically dissipate so I told you guys you could see some increases but i didn't expect this big of one overnight we now sit at a 70% chance of development both over the next 48 hours and the next seven days. So if this one develops, it is expected to happen over the next two or three days, uh, likely. So we're going to be watching this one very, very closely in the southern Gulf of Mexico. We will keep you guys up to date with that. Obviously, any tropical concerns in the Gulf are concerning for most people. Um, and we'll start to get ideas of where this one could track later on if it does develop. So be Tuning in dailies, we're going to discuss this pretty uh, consistently. 
Be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.